Hello, I'm looking forward very much to being with you in Heidelberg for the week of March the 13th. During that week, we're going to look into the book of Hebrews. There isn't any book that builds a bridge as strongly between the Old Testament and New Testament as does the book of Hebrews. And there's a good reason for that. It was written to Hebrew believers, that is Jewish believers, almost certainly during a time of persecution when many of them were being tempted to go back into Judaism, back to the synagogue, to avoid the persecution against Christians. And the writer is saying to them, you have in Christ the fulfillment of everything that you held in Judaism. In fact, he uses the word better many times in this uh, in this letter, he, he speaks of Christ being better than the angels, better than the prophets, better than Moses, better than Joshua, having a better priesthood than Aaron's priesthood. His blood is better than bulls and goats. The sacrifices are better. There's a better covenant. Uh, there is a better country to which we are heading. He even speaks of a better resurrection. But it's not all doctrinal. It's essentially a practical book because the writer describes it as a word of exhortation. A number of times he says things like, let us press on. Uh, let us go on to maturity. Let us keep, fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Let us leave the elementary teachings about Christ and go on to maturity. Let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. Let us approach the throne of grace with confidence. Uh, let us rest uh, in the promise that God has given to us. And so it is essentially practical. And it gives some solemn warnings about what happens if we don't move on and press on in that way. In fact, chapter 6 and chapter 10 have presented issues that have disturbed many Christians over the centuries. In chapter 6, he says, it's impossible for those who've once been enlightened, who've tasted the heavenly gift, who've shared in the Holy Spirit, if they fall away to be brought back to repentance. What does he mean by that? In chapter 10, he says, if we deliberately keep on sinning, after we've received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left. The best explanation I think I ever heard on these verses was somebody who said, the answer to the question, can you lose your salvation, is not yes or no, but don't. We're going to talk about how to press on and grow in Christ through this letter. It is doctrinal, and we'll look at that. It is practical, but it's also pastoral. And I trust as we handle this letter, we will look at all three aspects of that and that it will stimulate each of us to continue to grow in Christ in a fresh and deeper way. I look forward to seeing you. I hope you can make it to each session. And uh, may the Lord bless you.